guys. Yes. Hello and welcome guys to another podcast by Rupi Teng. We have a new member today, Tanvi. And we have the old classic Naman Tejas and me. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 And we have another exciting story for you today. And before that, I would just like to tell you all that this is uh, not investment advice in any way, shape or form. It's just for educational and entertainment purposes. And it's up to you to take more out of it. So the story that we have today is, um, okay, I don't know how to ask you all. Tanvi, which uh, air conditioner do you have in your house? Oh. Uh... Hitachi. Okay. I actually Naban. have Mitsubishi. It's NG in my house. Same. Even I have Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. So, um, that's two for LG and two for Mitsubishi. Even I have an LG uh, air conditioner. But uh, do you know who makes our uh, AC number? I mean, I obviously know, but you should uh, ask okay. this question to Tejas. <laughs> Uh, Chalte, just who makes uh, the LG ACs? LG? Ah, simple. Simple, but not so no. true. Uh, but no, that's <laughs> not true. LG doesn't make air conditioners. It outsources its products oh, for nice. air conditioners. The company that we're going to talk about today. Clearly, you haven't read anything about it. So, <laughs> the company that produces these air conditioners and um, that we are going to talk about today is P G Electrics Electronics. Electro Plus. Electro Plus, sorry. Yeah. You and your grammar, bro. Are grammar nahi, I didn't remember the name. Well, P G Electro Plus. So yes, it does white label manufacturing and it has a very very interesting story because in the past five years the company's stock has gone up by 19 times so you all have missed a very good opportunity if you all didn't invest in it and uh, this was driven mainly by the white goods production of this company or the shift from its normal business or its previous business uh, towards which white goods which was plastic molding towards white good production where um, okay another fun fact uh, they just how what do you think like what amount of uh, air conditioners like acs are produced by like third party manufacturers or like outsourced i production? thought there was no outsourcing yeah even i oh. thought but let's take a guess yeah, but but to everyone's like, astonishment around 60 percent of the no, 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 60%. Around 60% of, of the ACs manufacturer are actually outsourced to companies outsourced. like PG Electric. Yes. Damn, someone's using a machine gun somewhere. <laughs> he like, <laughs> is in Israel or something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yes, so 60% of uh, the AC market is has outsourced its production in India. And of course, we have this company in hand, who's, I think, 70% of their um, of the entire revenue, company revenue comes just from producing white goods. So they don't just produce ACs, they do washing machines and a few other things. Naman, and air coolers as well. So yeah, they, they are doing coolers. yeah. So they are doing air coolers, washing machines, and um, ACs right now, and they are also pouring, pouring into LED TVs in the coming years. Yeah, so there's a lot of white label manufacturing going on. White label manufacturing happening. Uh, so this company has a start. Like, what is white label manufacturing? Uh, yeah, so basically, let's say you are a big company, uh, a big brand, a big well-known brand. Let's say. For example, LG, and uh, you have a good present presence among the Indian households. So you design the AC, 
and uh, you do all the designing and the marketing for the ac but producing an ac ac for you is pretty expensive because uh, manufa- uh, you don't have much knowledge into manufacturing so what these companies do is they find out a small niche player who has the ma- who already has the manufacturing capability they go to them and they say ki like this is our ac ka design you just make this for us under our brand name not your brand name so this is what basically white labeling of goods is so making pro- uh, uh, products for another company under their brand name so this was this is what tg does okay understood okay so let us take a deep dive in what the company does so the company started its uh, uh, business in the year 2003 and it started off as uh, doing plastic molding so uh, how many of you all have some air coolers in your ghar- house air coolers wagera kuch cooler nahi ac hai ac hai na na so if you yeah, notice yeah, yeah. there's it's just the outer part is made of plastic and under ka everything is hollow yeah yeah, yeah. like so yeah ha that outer there's a fan inside ha ha so the outer plastic part no of the yeah. air cooler uh-huh. that this company used to make from 2003 and so on so this company used to do plastic molding and various plastic pieces uh, parts uh, which were used in automotive components jaise molded fittings jo hote the na ha dashboard ho us time ha to okay. this ha this was done by the company and the company did this until uh, which year tanvi until 2015 no Yeah, two thousand fifteen, seventeen. Yeah, I think eighteen they started. Ha. Huh. So this was done until twenty eighteen, but uh, 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 apparently the business business was not this was not a great business to be in. So oh, the companies. Ha. Uh, huh. So again, there there are many reasons, but some of them are that the company was was facing pricing pressures. for their product so uh, plastic molding mein what happens is uh, you just need a big mold to do plastic molding like any tom dick and harry can come go and start do plastic molding so it's not a hard business so to be standardized business where you don't need to have any r and d or anything like that entry barriers are very low basically yeah so there are no entry barriers so koi bhi aake if anyone has high capital no so it can start a plastic molding business so okay. uske wajah se the company was facing high pricing uh, barriers matlab they needed to uh, cut down their prices because ek to fragmented industry tha everybody was doing this plastic molding and okay. entry barriers kam the to uske jo margins bhi kam ho rahe the company ke so the company was owing only doing about uh, 6% in their ebitda margins okay so if we look at it in an uh, overview perspective this was not a good business to be in okay ha huh. so apparently since 2020 2003 around 70% of the revenues were coming from this plastics ka business okay and the later 30% the company was doing something known as pcb which is known as printed circuit boards so uh, The, there is a green color ka board if you any engineers out there there you see a green color ka board me me sir me sir me i'm sir. not an engineer but i also know what a circuit board is so i yeah so the sir, company sir, makes, sir sir me engineer sir <laughs> so the company makes these uh, printed circuit boards for various industries jahan par bhi ek printed circuit board lagta hai na the company can make these circuit boards for them again this comes into automotives and the remote controls which are used no so right. things like these so the company used to makes uh, used to make uh, these printed circuit boards but you again it was it. only a small part for the company so naturally there was a needed shift that was required for the company to be fruitful again which is where uh, in 2020 a shift came when the company started doing uh white goods which is yeah which then they started making acs washing machines and air coolers like they started manufacturing not just in bits and pieces 
but the whole product itself okay for the big brands yeah so after 2020 they were doing acs and um, fully automated washing machines semi automated washing machines and they saw that this is a very high growing business now there were multiple reasons why this is a high growing business firstly because the income levels in india are rising so back like in 21 the income levels were about an average household was earning 8 lakh but uh, now they forecast that in 27 um, until 27 it's going to go rise by 26% so that's a very good margin and that's going to increase the spending power of people uh, electricity is going to be accessible to villages and rural like tier 3 cities like not nasik but other tier 3 cities <laughs> So, so uh, I guess you uh, the number were wrong. So yeah, it was so, like three percent people of the population. Three percent of the household. Of India. Household. Three percent. Yeah. Percent of the household, so the household had, had an like average eight, income of eight lakhs. Of eight lakhs. Oh. But that okay. will go up to twenty six percent by twenty twenty seven. Yeah. So mm-hmm. not that will be a huge number, and because of right. which the disposable income. which is going to be high the penetration for this ac business will grow will grow and right. uh, shockingly the uh, ac penetration number in india is just at a mere around 5 to 7% matlab all over india that's that's to all over india it's just around 5 to 7 so 95% of the india of india they don't have ac space they don't have ac in their house so naturally Uh, the usage of AC is going to increase pretty fast in the upcoming yeah. years. And washing machine is less than twenty percent right now. Yeah. So the penetration for washing machine. So even if that goes up, this company will be benefiting because it will not just be making machines for like the green wow, white goods business, but also for uh, the OEMs. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of untapped. Yeah, I love you, Shane. No, no. Also, surprisingly, uh, you had uh, some joke. Yeah, you can tell that joke. Hobi wale sab out of business ho jayenge. Kya kya? Koi? Hobi wale. Maybe they no, they will be laundromats. Ki unke paas washing oh. machine. This, this is not Paris, uh, Paris. No, no, yeah. this isn't uh, the state. In Pune, also you have a dhobi wala who has a washing machine, and then you give clothes to him, and then. You But it's not laundry. That's called a laundry. That's called a laundry. That is not laundry. It is bathroom. 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 एक जोक एक तारक में तक कुछ स्टार्ट करते हैं ठीक है हाँ किसको आता है वो तारक में था आई डोंट वॉच तारक में था आई डोंट वॉच तारक में था ब्रो सागर को बोलना पड़ेगा जरा यू रिक्रूटिंग गलत हो गया हाँ रिक्रूटिंग फॉर्म में गलत इनफॉरमेशन बार है उसपे शिट आई शुडन्ट हैव लाइड ऑन माय सीवी चल चल तारक मेहता इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स Usually when I go into an electronic shop, I ask for a shower and I leave. <laughs> so another uh, metric which is really surprising for the company is since uh, since it started doing the white good white goods manufacturing in 2020, no. So that was around 25 to 27 percent of the total revenue of the business in 2020, and it jumped to around uh, 65 okay. percent of the total revenue in 2023. So just in three years. The company managed to uh, triple its uh, approximately triple its revenue from the white white goods wala segment, and uh, 
the plastics wala segment no uh, it uh, it was around 70% for the company in 2020 and it uh, dropped down to an around 30% in fy 23 so one more thing i wanted to ask is it just because there was the market was fragmented or were the margins lower because of which the company shifted from plastic to white goods yeah so uh uh the fragment uh, the market was fragmented for sure but because of that the company was not able to uh, uh price the product better right due to which oh, it was not able to generate better margin so they had a pricing power in the market yeah so they didn't have okay. pricing power in the business at all due to which the margins were also uh, not that great so the company was running at around 6% debita margin which uh, which came up to 8% uh, as it shifted to doing white goods so and uh, another yeah. thing that uh, helped them doing white goods was the uh, immense uh, benefit from the pli schemes which the government have introduced which tejas uh, and laksh would explain to us Why? <laughs> okay, so the government's PLI scheme, which is production linked, uh, incentive product, ha, huh, production linked incentive, and uh, PMP, which is a phased manufacturing program. These two are giving uh incentives for local manufacturing of products in it, like manufacturing of make in India kind of thing. So whichever company is doing this, uh. manufacturing they have this pli incentive so this company receive is going to receive 30 crores in 2024 and it received 20 15 crores in last year yeah 15 crores last year ha huh, this year 23 eh nahi 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 15 in 23 and then next year it's 30 ha yeah yeah so because of which like it is a incentive for these companies like this which uh, it is a place where it, the margins can be improved and because of mm. which more companies will be encouraged to come into this manufacturing segment yeah. and luxury will and the, later part the company is more incentivized to produce in india like also uh, usually uh, before this uh, make in india scheme no so majority of these white goods were uh, imported from china so india was the heavily reliant on china for the import of all these white goods so as soon okay. as make in india uh, make in india started and uh, government rolled out these in- incentive plans for uh, these uh, white labeling companies manufacturing companies uh, that time it proved a major benefit uh, for companies like pg electroplast to do in house manufacturing and rather not relying for imports on various companies from china and that helps in raw material cost as well yeah Which, so again, backward integration happens no so as the company was relying for various plants like there there is a copper tubing that goes into those acs right so rather than importing it from china if the company makes it by themselves in house so that becomes cheaper and essentially backward integration happens no so the company is not reliant on other companies for their raw material right so on that so uh, in uh, the uttarakhand and rajasthan plant uh, in this in both these plant the company did some expansion because of this uh, pli scheme the pro- whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. incentive they got yeah that incentive was used for these expansion projects and because of which the company could produce like 50% more capacity uh, the capacity was added by 50 more percent in 50 the same percent, plant yeah so the company is expected to increase the capacity by 50 more percent uh, okay. and they have also received a state incentive of about 10 odd crores to uh, fund that uh, Uh, fund production plan, like yeah fund production and this 50% is basically to cater the demand that uh, the company is going to receive 
uh, in the upcoming years. Yeah. So essentially, the, this uh, PLI plan and uh, the phased manufacturing program has uh, immensely helped uh, the company to grow better uh, in terms of numbers. And what are they? Okay. Yeah. Let's so, go to financials. Uh, financials, yeah. So we can compare the financials of the company in a, a two-way manner, which is basically post uh, doing bite goods and pre-doing bite goods. Essentially, when it was not doing bite goods and when it started doing bite goods. So when it was doing uh, bite, uh, when it was doing plastics, like right before uh, they started doing bite goods, the three-year revenue cagger was just sixteen percent. Okay. And as soon as they started doing bite, that's goods, between what year to what year? Which was FY seventeen to FY twenty. Okay. And as and soon as they the started post doing period. post period, which is FY twenty to twenty three, their revenue jumped by a fifty percent CAGR over a three year period. Jumped by fifty percent or two fifty percent? By jumped, so jumped. the company grew fifty percent CAGR over the three year period. Jump. In so it so it went from sixteen to twenty uh, to fifty percent, right? Huh. It is not by it is two fifty percent. Two. So it was doing uh, in FY twenty to FY twenty three. The company was growing by fifty percent CAGR. Okay. Which was uh uh, huh? Which was fifty percent and before it was just doing sixteen percent, and the EBITDA margins also grew from six to eight percent. Uh, and a rather shocking number would be a three, uh, the PAT number, which is pre white goods and post white goods. So pre white goods, which is FY seventeen to FY twenty, the company actually degrew. So the three year PAT CAGR was negative uh, eleven percent. So it was and a loss making business in plastics. No, 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 no. The profit reduced. The profit okay. reduced. Yeah. The, okay. It wasn't a loss-making company. The profit reduced. Okay, understood. And any guesses on the percentage at which at which it grew post doing white goods? Twenty percent, thirty percent. Laksh, what are your assumptions? Forty percent. Tanvi, so I cannot ask because she knows. But yeah, the post. Bravo. Roll. Bravo. Yeah. So FY20 to FY23 वाला period the company का PAT CAGR three year PAT CAGR was 209 percent. What? Yeah. Boom. Boom. That's a lot. That's a lot. 209 percent पे the profit was growing at a during that three year period. And basically. All these numbers uh, also reflected in their operating metrics for the company. So, if we also compare again, again over a five-year period, which is three doing uh, white goods, uh, the return on equity which the company was generating in FY18 was at around six percent, and in FY23 the company managed to do about twenty-two uh, percent in return on equity. Okay. And also the return. If we check the return on capital employed uh, in FY18, it was around seven and a half percent, and it it also jumped to twenty two percent in uh, FY23. Again, nice. a crazy. Number. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah, uh, the crazy. profit. The profit was eight crores in FY18, and they managed to churn out a profit of about seventy seven crores in. Uh, FY twenty uh, three. That is like ten times, almost ten times. Almost ten times, yes. just in a five year period. That's good. This is all because of the turnaround that they did yeah. from plastic the to white goods. Yeah, the plastics to white goods while a business. Okay. So, and what are the margins like in uh twenty eighteen? And what are the margins? Fat margins. The fat. Uh, the company was doing around two percent in profit margins, 
and uh, it actually doubled so in fy23 it uh, it churned out a pat margin of around 4% so not only the pat increase but the margins are also going up because yeah. of white goods yeah 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 cool it's talking like the pat uh, grew at around 210% yeah and yeah, that number is crazy that's what happened yeah, we can ask this question to tanvi she's tanvi is it cagr or cagr <laughs> i say cagr so <laughs> yeah. Even I say cagr. I mean, Lug. sometimes I say C A G R, but but it's cagr. Oh, yeah, I mean, cagr is so easy to say. Like you don't like say E B I T D A. Yeah, you don't say pad. Yeah, you say pad. So cagr, what's the problem? Why? Who is Team C A G R? Ayush and Lux. But it sounds better, CAGR, instead of CAGR. No, it doesn't. CAGR. It's CAGR, it doesn't. bro. Yeah. yeah. CAGR, yeah. So, to wrap it up, what are the... Wrapping it up, the company seems to have a, back, a bright future ahead with uh, the revenue projected to grow at a 30% uh cagr over the next two years so we can okay. say that hello yeah yeah you're yeah. audible yeah so the company is projected to um, grow at a 30 percent revenue cagr over the next two years which sounds pretty exciting to us but um, for more information and to read more about it and to know more about the company you can check out our blog the link will be in the description. Link is in the bio. <laughs> and to see any of our previous videos, you can just click somewhere up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And also, you should like, subscribe, and comment if you need share. anything else. Subscribe. Subscribe and share. And please let and us know if you, if you have any particular um, company, company in mind. Yeah. Cover. So, yes, with that. So that's a wrap.